right, so burning the midnight oil uh, today. So I want to clear up some misconceptions and misunderstandings surrounding ignition timing and vacuum advanced distributors. Recently, I guess, I've had some folks ask me online regarding if they should get a vacuum advanced distributor or a mechanical advanced distributor. So again, I just want to clear up some of that. Now, to understand the concepts behind vacuum advance, we need to first understand the significance of ignition timing overall and its function. So, to make the most out of your cylinder's fuel charge, it must be ignited when the piston is at its maximum compression point, right before it is about to travel back down the cylinder on the compression stroke. So, too soon and you have what is referred to as pinging, and too late and you'll just be leaving power on the table. So, um, which in excess, just like pinging, can um, you know lead to damage as well. So ignition time is clearly important to making good reliable power. Uh, we also need to understand the concept of air fuel ratio here today, which is gonna be controlled by your carburetor mainly. So um, to start out, a lean mixture burns slower. The particles are less dense, and it takes longer to get a complete burn. On the other hand, um, a richer mixture is fairly dense and burns uh, relatively quickly. So it is really a little surprise, I guess, that air-fuel ratio plays a significant um, factor in your timing advance as well. Now, when we're cruising down the road with less throttle opening and high engine vacuum, you know, again, very low load, the fuel mixture from the carburetor is generally um, fairly lean. And this is where the vacuum advance comes into play. Now remember that a leaner mixture takes longer to burn, so it's going to need more ignition timing to hit at that right point. So the vacuum advance canister works off of your engine's vacuum. So again, at low load, your engine is above a certain vacuum level, and the vacuum advance will pull in ignition timing in order to get the proper burn um, on that leaner air fuel mixture. So um, just to show here, you know, with it running off of ignition timing, if I take my hose and suck in on it there, you saw that it advances the ignition timing. So again, when you have that low load, um, high um, engine vacuum, you know, you're pulling in that extra timing. So without your vacuum advance or your vacuum advance canister here, um, you'll just have a late burn at that, those cruising speeds and that leaner cruising air fuel ratio. So you're effectively taking away some of the engine's potential power. Again, you're firing when that piston is already on its way um, back down the stroke. And, um, you know, you just got to give more throttle feed to roll down the road in that situation. So um, overall, this really just results and just a loss in MPG, and from my experience, um, you know, it costs me about three to four mile per gallon if I'm not running a vacuum advance. And again, let me reiterate, this has nothing to do with the all-out power of the engine. This plays absolutely no factor whatsoever. When you mash the gas pedal, your vacuum will drop, and the vacuum advance, again, is factored out. So, um, and that's leaving only your um, mechanical ignition timing to do the work there, which is under our cap, which with that enriched high throttle event, um, you know, it doesn't require as much ignition timing for a proper burn. So you really only need this mechanical ignition timing when you're really getting into the gas pedal. So again, you know, the vacuum advance really isn't playing a, um, any part in your total engine performance. So overall, I guess a weekend warrior car really doesn't need vacuum advance because um, it, is, it doesn't do much cruising around. Um, but if you plan to drive your car around often, you know, I drive my car um, daily to work over the interstate, and you know, if you rely on it, the vacuum advance, um, you know, might be worth it from a fuel economy standpoint. You know, it's, it's really up to you, um, and you just gotta kinda consider with what I told you uh, thus far. It is one more thing that can fail and cause a vacuum leak, so, um, that's something to consider, but overall, um, you will have a mile per gallon benefit from running these. But I want to clarify that your vacuum advance does not play into your, init your initial and your total timing settings. So um, always when you're setting these, you want to make sure you remove um, your 
vacuum advance and plug it off at your carburetor so it doesn't factor in. Again, um, that's based on your mechanical ignition timing and that has nothing to do with your vacuum advance. So on another note, um, you know, if you have a big large cam in your engine, a uh, vacuum advance may not be for you because you can't pull enough um, vacuum from your engine for this to function properly and it could be pulling in timing, letting the timing out back and forth, fluttering around, and it can just cause a world of issues. I'm not going to get too much into this, you know, I believe that, um, you know, there's certain cam sizing that's required for street driving and I think a lot of people kind of muddy the waters between race cams and street cams and street engines. So um, for the sake of keeping this video short this time, we're just really going to avoid that and we won't get into it. Now I will say this, if you have a mild cam and you run more ignition timing than um, the stock settings are, it's in your best interest to run um, your vacuum advance off of ported vacuum and, and that's so it's not adding uh, any ignition timing on the vacuum advance canister at idle. Um, if you run full manifold vacuum, which usually works out with a more stock cam running, you know, eight degrees before top dead center. So um, usually it works out there where you can run manifold vacuum and the vacuum advance canister is pulling in about 15 degrees um, or so. And you know, there's adjustable vacuum advance canisters where you can adjust how much they pull in. But for the average person, you know, if you got a mild cam and you're unported vacuum, you'll, you'll be just fine. If you have a stock cam and you're on manifold vacuum with these, you'll usually do okay. Well, I guess that's really it for me today. I just really want to touch on that. You know, I, I kind of touched on some other points here that I didn't really go into detail about. Um, I'm pretty active on my channel, so if you want to drop in and ask me a question about something I said here or something I went over, you know, I'd be happy to answer and we can hash it out down there in the comments. So I guess if you have questions, just leave me a comment and let me know and I'll get back with you and, you know, I'll explain things further. But for now, that's kind of um, my simple take on vacuum advance. And, you know, I hope you walk away with a little bit better understanding of its functionality.